Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back to this very important topic, which is my parents led me to zina. This is week two on this topic because, as we told you before, it's a very, very important topic to discuss. I have Muhammad Ali Hashim with me, and uh, we've been through quite a bit in terms mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, going through this. Even off air, we've spoken about this as well, brothers and sisters. And there's some serious revelations. And actually, before the show ends, I have a shocking revelation, actually, where I have definitive proof that parents can and indeed do lead children to zina, subhanAllah. Um, before we actually come to that, uh, what we do, we've got some more clips to play you, but Muhammad, uh, we were talking about, before the break, we were talking about um, how what we're not the children are not understanding, the, 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 the youth are not understanding that although it may come across as fun and games when they're young and when they're mm -hmm. frolicking and getting involved in all of the, the, the zina and the haram acts, there is something that may stay with them for the rest of their lives, and that mm. is um, STDs, you mm. know, sexually transmitted diseases. It happens, it's there, because it's understandable, because if everyone's in the same attitude, or the same mentality of doing what they want, when they want, to who they want, there will be these bad sorts of consequences that will come with it, right? No, subhanAllah. Um, I, th I, th I think there's, there's a very famous quote which, you know, uh, would protect us from what you're saying, and at the same time, bring, bring to light what you're saying. It's uh, of Umar ibn Khattab, I think, where he said, we were once the most humiliated nation on earth. And Allah gave us honor through Islam. And if we seek honor through everything else, Allah will humiliate us again. Mm. Have you incorporated into that into what we're saying now? It's, look at the state of the Muslims before Islam, where they had all these sort of fornications and things. And Islam came and it protected them from things like STDs and AIDS and all these, yep. yeah, uh, <coughs> all these problems and diseases in, in the communities. And Islam told us how to, you know, Islam never told us don't have desires. You know what I mean? Islam never told you, okay, don't feel this way, don't feel that way. It told you how to deal with it. It told you how to control it. It told you how to release it in, you know, an honorable way, in a correct way. If you seek that through anything else, Allah himself will disgrace you. And there's, there's always that thing, I won't be me. Allahu alam who Allah, Allah chooses. Allah. Allahu alam who Allah chooses to, 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 to pass away. I could pass away tonight on my way home. Yeah. Someone might fall, call, will call up any one of the brothers that are involved in Dawah and say, I've, I've, caught, I've caught something. Yeah. We don't expect the person who calls us telling us, bro, I've fallen into this situation. Mm -hmm. You don't expect it. But the problem is, is that this is something which no one, it's so shameful, no, no one will tell somebody and that's else. Another, yeah. no one, so, so this means... How do you tell someone, oh, I've got this? Exactly. Well, they will never do that. No. What will happen is, at that point, I'm sure that will shock them into mm. realisation that they, they need to be back on their deen. So what they want to do now is they want to get back on their deen, get back in their life, and they may approach your daughter. Oh, no. And they may approach your daughter where, where they'll be thinking, OK, I want to be a good Muslim now. Mm. But this is where the problem is, subhanAllah. It's incredible, mm -hmm. it really is. I mean, actually, brothers and sisters, just um, to remind you that the phone lines are on the screen. The phone number's on the screen, the lines are open. If you want to comment on this, then you may call in. If you have any um, examples that you'd like to share with us, please call in and share those examples, because this is a very um, a serious topic. And as I said, I have a, a shocking revelation. With examples, maybe, also, if you do have examples, maybe try to keep them third person. Like <laughs> It's probably a good idea yeah, to keep yeah, no, third no person. Don't, obviously, sins. don't expose your sins between yeah, you and Allah. Absolutely. Allah. This is a very important point yeah, as well, yeah, because Allah. obviously someone might know you and then you're, you are exposing your sins. No. Uh, and also conceal the other person where we know when you conceal the sins of someone in this dunya, yeah. Allah will conceal the sins of yours in Akhirah. So even if you do have a situation, mm. conceal the other person, inshallah, and mm -hmm. may Allah accept our repentance and our tawbah. Yeah. I'd like to play a couple more clips if that's possible um, because, uh, again, you know, I want to involve you brothers and sisters in this and uh, because you, obviously, we came out into the streets and we, we spoke to you. So let's listen to a couple more um, clips. Again, it's the same question. Let's see what you had to say about that, inshallah. What do you think causes the youth, your age or older or younger, 
to commit zina? Why do they choose that path? I think it's like peer pressure. So peer pressure, like yeah? a group of boys are just talking about it and then yeah. people feel left out. So just so basically you're friends. Yeah, so you're friends. If they're doing it, you feel like you want to do it as well. Yeah. It's just like how people are dressing, like girls, how they're dressing. Mm. They just see them like boys just... So do you think that, make, that makes it harder? Like how... Like, well, for yeah. people, yeah, because I've heard people say that. What do you believe causes the youth young, maybe 16, 18, 20, to choose the path of Zina, like, you know, sex outside the marriage, basically. What do you believe is the main cause of that? Is it parents? Is it friends? Is it peer pressure? Is it society? What do you believe? I think it's society, how society is changing nowadays. Yeah. It's 2015. Like, if you think about it, when it was, like, in the 90s or something, that would be completely not acceptable. But the society that we live in and the Western society and everything, it's just people, Muslim girls, they just think it's right. It even... I don't even think, like, if you're talking about, like, sex before marriage and yeah. stuff, even when, you, if you think about relationships and stuff, yeah. it's not right to have relationships before marriage, yes. but girls nowadays think it's all right. Do you think Muslim girls, uh, practicing or not practicing, do you think they go down that route? Does parents play a role, or do you think it's because, okay, if I don't do that, I'm not going to get married? Is, 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 do they have this, as a, as a female, what do you think goes through their head? Girls that I know that's ever been in relationships, I, I would think that their parents would be like, no, you shouldn't do that and stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, do you think parents are making it hard on marriage that brothers and sisters are thinking, you know what, it's like, it's hard, do you get it? Like, for example, there's that issue of, okay, like, where are you from? Like, where are you from? Bangladesh. Okay, so if your family, if you wanted to marry, let's say, outside of Bangladesh, would your family be okay? To be honest, not really. Okay, so do you think that is a problem? Because parents are saying no. For example, he has to be Bangladesh or he has to be Pakistani or he has to be Somalian or he has to be a doctor. He has to have this, he has to have that. Do you think that plays a role in the youth saying, you know what, you've made marriage so impossible for me. Zinas, that you, yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. Do you think that, that plays a role? I think parents put a lot of pressure on their children and that may be the reason why kids are like that yeah. nowadays yeah. I think that's my opinion uh, what do you believe is um, causing the youth to commit Zina why are they going down that route um, I think the reason behind it is society and the way people perceive them and they want to show others that oh we're not this what you're perceiving us we're not extremists we're not this and that we're actually normal human beings okay. such as yourself. So, so to fit in what do you believe is causing the youth to go down the route of Zina is it parents society is it friends uh, personally I think it's society parents you know my parents, they play, they play a good, uh, good role in my life. Like uh, they, te they, they taught me from young. They took me to the masjid. They taught me, you know, right from wrong, yeah. from the b very beginning. So right now, you know, when you go to school, you make friends. Yeah. You know, you watch a bit of TV. Yeah. You go out with, you know what I mean? You're, exp you're, you're exposed to a lot more in this country than maybe back home or in Saudi Arabia. Like I was saying, how I went there when I was younger, and how I was at peace there. You know, it was, it's a simple life. I went there to uh, for Umrah, and what happened was, yeah, I, I just felt like. I could commit no wrong and when I came back it sort of just I fell out of place. Do you think parents make it hard in a way where when it comes to marriage one of the biggest things that you like, tell us yeah is that basically okay um, you can't marry somebody outside our caste he has to be from our tribe or he has to be a doctor he has to have this profession do you think that makes it that's that's a perfect example of why uh, people might commit zina do you know what I mean it's that it's, you know, marriage is so hard that things become cheap. Yeah, it's like you're forbidden to cross that line. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I, in Islam, that's wrong, completely wrong. I disagree with yeah. anyone who says, "Oh, you're not allowed to marry, or oh, say a white person, yeah, or yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, they're happens, still Muslim." Happens, that's yeah. that's yeah. you know, it's a religion. It's not yeah, like an yeah. ethnicity. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? What do you believe is causing our youth? to go down the route of Zina? Like, is it the parents? Is it the parents making it hard? Is it social pressure influence, influencing them? Is it their friends? I think it's more social influence. It's a bit of all of it, to be honest, but it's more social influence by the people, for example, here when we live in London, we see it every day. It's a norm, it's normal for people to do it. So people just tag along. Um, I think parents, if they're a bit too tight on their kids as well, they can go off-road to things like that. But mostly, I think it's social influence. What do you believe is causing the youth to go down the route of Zina? Like, why are they saying, you know what, like, I'm going to go down that route? Is it parents? Is it society? Is it friends? What is it? I think it's society and friends. Okay. How? Um, I think it's promoted, like, in the society a lot. I think um, if with our culture, I think people find it all right to do it nowadays. Like, what do you think? Do you think, do you think parents play a role in this? Um, 
like by making marriage hard like for example uh, like where are you guys from Bangladesh yeah Bangladesh yeah would like for example would your family allow you to marry a Muslim that's non Bengali honestly I don't think so Probably yeah. not. I think our Bengali parents would want us to marry like Bengali people. Yeah. They would like if they, even if they were Muslim, but they were like black, for example. Yeah, yeah. I think they'd be like, no, like so it doesn't fit into their norm. So that's uh, what you thought. Those are your mm -hmm. thoughts on there, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah. Now, actually, before we um, continue with this, let's uh, take a call, inshallah. So, assalamu alaikum, caller. Wa alaikum assalam. Jazakallah khair for calling in. What's your name, bro? Armesh. Wait, what's your name, sorry? Armesh. Armesh. Jazakallah khair for calling in, brother. What's your comments, inshallah, or your question? My comment? Um, yeah, so, um, love your show. Mashallah, um, jazakallah khair. And you. just want to say, like, I agree with how you say that friends and peer pressure um, kind of uh, promotes the, um, the way um, the young youth see marriage and all of that. Mm -hmm. So just want to say that at this age I'm fourteen, so That's I'm kind of like I see my friends and they all have like girlfriends and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So it kind of like show it, it makes everyone else like it kind of promotes people to want to have a girlfriend and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. it it's just that I think that the friends kind of promote having all of this before marriage. And, yeah, that's really it. What do you think uh, the parents can do to, um, could you think they could do more to, to f help for this not to happen? I think that the parents should, like, sit down, have a talk with the child yeah. at this age, because they know this is the age where they go through, like, hormones and yeah. everything. And I think they should talk to them. Mm. Agreed, agreed. Fantastic. Really appreciate that. Those comments are exactly bang on with what we're talking about here no. today. And also being 14 as well, that is the right age as well on this. I mean, subhanAllah, uh, I pray that Allah makes it easy for you to stay on the straight path, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, be steadfast as well, because just judging by that call, we know that inshallah, you'll be one of those that will be pioneering the way, paving the way for uh, getting the rest of the, the young brothers and sisters to stay focused on their deen. So jazakallah khair for that, no. subhanAllah. Uh, okay, so Muhammad, as you saw there, with a lot of those comments there, they mm. mentioned society, peer pressure, and things like this. I mean, um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, <clears throat> obviously, we live in a society which it's not in a controversial way, but it's not our society. It's mm. not is exactly the most Islamic uh, society. But however, what I would what I would say to that is, is that saying why is someone a gangster or why is someone fell into this, the roads or the streets, not to put two to get the two on the same platform, because mm. Zina is it's a severe thing, but it's how you deal with it. Society only plays a certain part by exposing it to you, okay? But then it's how you actually react to it, how you deal with it. You have the story of, <coughs> you have the story of, um, actually, let me, let me not get it wrong, but um, yeah. Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was uh, invited, um, by the, the 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 queen at the time. Yeah, it was a Yeah, Nam, and he basically he rejected and he feared Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though he was living amongst that time amongst those people, it is about how you react or how much your fa how your fam. What I'm trying to say is is how their family is basically brought the child up to deal with this situation. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean how the family either aids them or pushes them towards it? Because if your child comes to you and society is already Fed him all this kind of boyfriend, girlfriend stuff, mm -hmm. and he comes to you telling you, I've got a girlfriend, or I've got someone I want to marry. How are you going to deal with that? Are you going to deal with it in a way, is the family going to deal with it in a way which pushes them towards it even more? Or is the family going to deal with it in a way where they remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They told him exactly why he shouldn't be doing it. They show them the correct way that he should be dealing with mm -hmm. it. And sorry, and that's, that's, that's basically comes down to, okay, society only plays a certain part, but then it's you yourself, how you've been raised and how your family deal with it as well. By the way, just to clarify something, we're not here justifying this statement because by all, like, by all means this statement is still incorrect. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is make it easier for the Shabab so they don't fall into this statement because this statement is something which 
is apparent to us all, mm. that we see it day to day, literally. Right, so our last caller, mm. right, he was only 14 years old. Nam. Now, last week, if you remember, and if you remember at home as well, brothers and sisters, last week, what happened is we actually, we ruled, we, we put that to one side, that age. Mm. For this topic, we felt that we should be concentrating more on probably like 15, 16, up to 18, 19 years old, right? Mm. But then that, those are ages where it's easy to, for a parent to say, okay, we're going to get you married off now because we can see, whoa, this is dangerous now, mm. right? But 14 years old, as our caller said, that they are still, you know, they're getting engaged and in, involved in the girlfriend and boyfriend uh, lifestyle, right? Mm. That's too young to get married. So what on earth can we do to protect someone that age? Allah. Before you answer that, actually, I'm going to take this call because obviously our call is mean so much to us. Jazakallah yeah. So, Assalamu alaikum, caller. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, Sam. Jazakallah for joining us. Uh, it's all yours. What would you like to say? Um, I'll just say that um, I think it's really good that you're doing this program mm -hmm. because it's um, down to the youth level. It's not, you know, going too Islamic. Um, obviously, I agree. Fam I agree. Parents have got a role to it. Family, friends. Um, media etc but I don't think it's completely the parents fault um, the parents I think if they obviously nowadays um, parents are more relaxed you sort of can speak to them but sometimes it is a bit scary to approach them and I think you know obviously back in Bangladesh or you know the older generation um, it's a bit taboo to speak about this subject mm. um, so I don't think um, it's easy to approach your family also you know, friends do play a role. That depends who you hang around with. Um, it's like, it's not, if you don't have a partner, it's, you know, you're a bit of like an outcast type thing. Mm. And I think it's a lack of education, a lack of Islam um, mm. that does, you know, contribute to committing zina. And, you know, people think, I think if you preach a little bit, people, um, you know, say, oh, well, you know, they get funny about it. So I think it's Islam slowly is fading away and it's really hard to oh, yeah. uh, promote it and if you do speak anything about it you know people just try and avoid you so i think it's just a mixture of everything really okay so i'd love i'd love to hear from you in terms of, first of all how old are you sister 23 sorry i'm 23 23 mashallah you sounded like 14 like the last caller mashallah <laughs> no I was going to ask you, please give us a solution, a suggestion at least, because as you mentioned, like from certain parts of our community, you mentioned Bangladesh, maybe, you know, a child of 14 years old or more might be worried that as soon as they reveal to their parents that they have that urge, right, that, that need to get married, that the parents may even just say, right, you're going back home or you're going to go to, you know, yeah. we're going to bury you in a madrasa somewhere to never come out until you are 50 years old. Or <laughs> this is what they might be afraid of. So what would you suggest, that, you know, to the brothers and sisters that would help them to say, OK, I have now found a way to approach my parents? OK, first of all, I think um, at that age, obviously, you are going to different hormones, you know, you know, you see it's, you know, a lot of people are doing. It. I think if if you do have that, I think if you can go to your parents and say, look, um, you know, you, you know, I don't know what to do. And I think, you know, if you're really stu studying, you shouldn't even be thinking about that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. for example, um, like my family, my parents have always said to us at that age, you know, if you ever find anyone, then let us know, uh, this is what we want, etc. But this is what I want you to achieve, you know, go through school, I want That's you enough. to study, um, you know, and, you know, when we think it's okay to get married, then we'll let you know. I, I think, um, I think there's a time and place for everything. But they need to under, you know, I think the parents need to stress the fact that, you know, you're just going through a phase. And um, I, as another thing, I think if you keep lock, you know, not lock up your child, but if you don't let your child go out or, because nowadays you need a phone, uh, but it's just, I think you should let them, let them explore the world, but have control as well at the same time. Like some people they don't let the kids go out, they don't let them have any friends. And I think if they don't go to explore or have that bit of freedom, when they do have the freedom, they'll go completely off the track. So I think they need to say, you know, this is the age that you should be studying and you shouldn't even be thinking about that. And slowly but surely, um, you know, I think they'll be okay. Like my parents, but, you know, they told the sentence of Madrasa, they um, said, look, we want you to study. They let us go out with our friends, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, as a lady. 
you mm. know, I had somebody with me, you know, um, and let, let us have that freedom, but not too much as well. Because I think sometimes if you give too much, they're going completely off veil. But whereas if you don't, you need to have that balance. That's what it is. You need to trust, you need to show your child that you trust them. Mm. Uh, but obviously implement Islam as well. And I think um, you need to uh, implement Islam when they're little as well, not mm-hmm. just when they become, you know, a bit older, I want you to pray, blah, blah, blah. You know, ha- encourage them to pray in the mouth. You know, um, reward them for doing good, you know, whether it's English or Islam, it's to reward them. Whereas mm. our Asian people, they're like, you know, you have to go mask and blah, blah, blah. I think they're sometimes quite negative about it. Um, so I think if so you reward them as they're going on, even when they're younger, they will automatically, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, very well put, mashallah. Um, well, good before, we, before we do comment on that, Mama, why don't you take this next call? We have another no. call, inshallah. Cool. Yeah. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello, caller. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Alaikum, assalam. Mashallah. Assalamu alaikum, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Islam. And I'm calling from Birmingham. Mashallah. How old are you, Uh I'm 20. MashaAllah, no matter what the lucky, what would you like to contribute? I uh, just want to say that you know it's a good thing that you, you uh, that you've um, you know you you you've uh, put a live show on, and Alhamdulillah, that like, it's it's for the youngsters as well, so that they are aware of uh, the mm. society around us, and you know it's good that you know that you're teaching them about society. In today's now in uh, today's uh, generation or not? No. How m- how much would you say the parents play a role in this uh, topic? Say it again. How much of a percentage would you say that the parents play play a role in the per- in this? Um, uh, well, the parents they can't really do anything because obviously uh, today in today's day and age, obviously they hardly have any control over their children. Obviously. Oh no. Yeah. 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 That's very well put, yeah. 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 really appreciate that, alhamdulillah, I mean look, this is it, I mean again it's beautiful because we're hearing from the brothers and sisters mm-hmm. at home, uh, and uh, you were going to make a comment off the I think with the first caller, one yeah. thing that she mentioned was her parents had told her, listen at this age this is going to happen and mm. this, you know, this is what we want and this is the criteria and if there is anyone that, see that, that kind of um, interaction with your children, yeah. that's what's missing. Do you know what I mean? That's, that is what's missing. Mashallah and May Allah bless the, every, all of our parents. But that sort of interaction is what's missing. Rather than, no, why? Because I said so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, you're going to marry him. Why? <laughs> yeah. Do I need to say anymore? Because I'm your mum. Because I'm your dad. That's it. Or, no, because I, this kind of interaction is going to only push your children further away from you, further away from the deen, mm-hmm. and more towards, unfortunately, the shaitan. Or even if they do fulfil it, they won't be happy in their marriage. Yeah. You know what I mean? And these are the kind of things where this is where the parent play, plays a role. And with all, that, that is correct. We live in a time now where parents have hardly have any control over their parents, or over their children, sorry. Parents are finding it difficult to control their children. Mm. But in these kind of topics, let's be serious, man. Mm. Parents are still have quite a lot of influence in... Do you think parents, uh, just say, oh, I give up, just whatever they're going to do as long as they're safe? <laughs> do you think that happens? Some parents do say that. Yeah. Some parents do say that. But some parents say that in a in a good way, in a bad way, where yeah. if a parent is trying to marry the child off and the child is maybe picky or maybe against a certain nation or you know what I mean, if your parents trying to marry you to the same nation and you're like, no, 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 mm-hmm. then eventually they're like, you know what, cool, marry whoever you want, mm. as long as blah blah blah. So, um some cases you do get that. Also, Another question is, do you no. think that we have um, been focusing our energy on, uh, like, for example, do the viewers at home have the impre- impression that we're speaking about um, very practicing parents? No. Do you, think pra- do you think that's what it is? We've got five minutes left. Okay. So before you answer that, I'm going to now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to come to that startling, shocking revelation that I said I was going to give you earlier on. Mm. We were asked a question about, uh, we, we, we said that you know, the children are claiming that the parents have led them to Zina, okay? Uh, that was the claim. Mm. We went out onto the streets, and when we went out to the streets, um, no one actually really said it. And we believe there's good reason why they didn't actually just come out with it and say it. Uh, but 
it's a reality, that's what happened on the streets. But when people were asked the question, then of course they agreed and said, yes, the parents play some part mm. in this. Mm. Brothers and sisters, we've been focusing on uh, maybe, you know, just the families who are very deeply practicing families. Mm. We haven't really touched on what about the more loose or the more relaxed parents, the, the right? The cultural parents. Even the cultural parents. Yeah. Very good point. Brothers and sisters, I have a first-hand account, mm -hmm. okay, a first-hand account where a mother has said to her son, go out and explore. He said to her son to go out and experience. I want you to experience before you get married. SubhanAllah. Mm. This is a first-hand account. This is not a hearsay. And now that parent's son is in a relationship which she has encouraged. SubhanAllah. And there's many more examples like this mm. where the parents, they, want, they love their children so much and they don't want their children to run away. Mm. So they say, if this is what it takes, then go and do zina. Oh, no. So it was not a false claim that was made, brothers and sisters. It was, obviously, it was um, deeply thought up by my brothers here, <laughs> Ali, Musa, <laughs> Ali Muhammad, Musa, right, who came up with this. <laughs> and subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, it is a reality. So the question we need to ask you is, what are we going to do about it? You thought I was going to just point the finger at you and say, what are you going to do about it? But this is our problem as a community. We've spoken about the sexually transmitted diseases that comes as a result of this. We've spoken about many other ills that come from it. If, this is the question. If we, was, if we was to go into two examples where it basically illustrates the title, you have a situation, and I want you guys to picture this, and this is literally not a made-up situation. This is a situation which I have um, dealt with and helped someone with first hand. You have a situation where a sister wants to marry a brother and the sister's too afraid to tell the family. Everything is done in secret. The mother disapproves of the person. The sister runs away to get married. And then family goes all over the place. Someone ends up in prison. Family's all broken down. Things are all over the place. That sister went off to be with this guy in Haram. That's a situation wow. where if the parent had dealt with it correctly in the Islamic way or has even sat down and spoken to the daughter, sat down and spoken to the family, even if they had told the other family members what was going on, that's something which could have been dealt differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But due to, and I don't mean to label our parents, but due to someone's arrogance or pride or culture, that's what led to it. You have another situation where a person wants to marry, a, a sister wants to marry a brother, a brother wants to marry a sister, they're inclined towards each other. The family have made it difficult. Yep. The love. family have made it difficult for one reason or the other, yep. whether it be wealth, whether it be uh, age, whether yep. it be the house, the flat, whatever reason. Sorry to cut you, Muhammad. We actually yep. have reached that time, subhanAllah. Next time, inshallah. <laughs> but no more zina. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, may Allah make it other easy for you to stay focused on the deen. No, stay focused, inshallah. And as our viewers, you, you yourselves, 14 years old, 23 years old, 20 years old, have all said just to be patient and to be focused because bear in mind that what, what is out there, mm. what's lurking out on the streets for you is a lot worse than the thought of just being in a nice relationship, going to the cinema, going wherever. Zina can lead to STDs which could ruin your lives. So brothers and sisters, I urge you to stay focused, stay on the Dean. If you need any more help or comments, email us. Call us, we'll help you. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.